The Stripe CLI is one of the most powerful tools you can use when building and testing your Stripe integration. If you'd like to watch a deep dive video on the Stripe CLI, you can find a link in the description. Let's take a moment, though, to recap on some of the great features you can use to drive your development process. You can, via the command line, use the Stripe CLI to list, retrieve, create, and update many different types of resources, like payment intents, charges, customers, and checkout sessions, to name a few. You can also use the CLI to tail the logs in your account so that you can see in real time the calls that your system is making. And you can even create your own sophisticated fixtures. And now the Stripe CLI is available for testing directly in the Stripe docs known as the Stripe Shell. Since Stripe Shell runs in the browser, there are a couple of features that are only available in the command line interface, but being able to trigger events, listen to events in your account, and query and manipulate resources from anywhere in the Stripe docs is immensely powerful. So let's take a look. The first thing to check is that you're signed into your Stripe account. You can see this when you navigate to the Stripe docs and check the top right corner. If you're signed in, you'll see the name of your Stripe account there. Once you've made sure that you're signed in, there's two ways to invoke the Stripe shell. Firstly, you can navigate to the Stripe CLI docs under Development Tools. There you'll see a button labeled Try it online. If you click the button, the shell will appear. If you're logged in, you can invoke the shell from anywhere inside the docs using the keyboard shortcut Control and Backtick. For example, if I happen to be on the docs homepage and I'd like to access the shell, I can simply hit Control Backtick to open it. Let's start experimenting. One of the main features of the shell is that it allows you to learn, experiment, and manage resources in your account. So let's start with listing payment intents on our account. You'll notice that the shell will autocomplete as you type. You can hit Tab to iterate through the options listed below and hit Enter to select the currently highlighted option. And you can also click on the autocomplete options to add it to your command. This is a brand new account, so as expected, we don't have any payment intents. So let's use the shell to create one. The required fields are listed at the top, so let's provide an amount and a currency. Let's list again and see what we get. If we expand the first and only element in the data array, we can see our new payment intent. What if we made a mistake though and are charging the customer too much? We need to update it, so let's go and do that. We'll click on the clipboard icon next to the payment intent ID. Then let's update the payment intent to charge only 10 euros. Before we do that though, since the update command will take a payment intent ID, let's check the format of that command by using the help argument for update. It seems like we pass the payment intent ID and then the parameters, so let's go ahead and update the amount. We can already see in the response that the amount of the payment intent has been updated to 10 euros. Let's verify that in the dashboard. There we have it. We've created and updated a payment intent with just a few keystrokes right in the browser. Let's jump into the docs for interacting with the API. Notice in the code snippets, there's commands for the Stripe CLI. I can copy that code snippet and run it directly here in the shell as I'm reading through the doc. Or if you see the green play button next to a Stripe CLI command, you can simply click it and it will automatically run that command in the shell. So now you're already equipped to start to experiment and manage API resources using the Stripe shell. Let's experiment with events in our system. We'll start by splitting the shell into two panes. In the first pane, let's call Stripe Listen to listen for events on our account. And in the second, let's create a payment intent. Cool, we can see that the shell is listening for the exact event that we expect when creating a payment intent. You might know this from the Stripe CLI, but it's also possible to trigger specific events too. Let's trigger the payment intent succeeded event. Again, you can see that autocomplete is immensely helpful here. You might notice that we receive multiple events in our pane that's listening. That's because the payment intent succeeding also creates a charge object, so we see all of the related events. While the browser shell cannot forward events to your local development server, it's still possible to use other tunneling software like ngrok to tunnel events from your Stripe account to your local dev machine and trigger those events from the shell. In my case, I've set up a tunnel and I'm using that to send webhook events from my Stripe account to my local dev machine. This is so useful when building and testing a webhook endpoint on your local machine. I'm running a super simple Sinatra app locally, which will echo when certain event types are posted to the endpoint. So let's go ahead and trigger a payment intent succeeded event in the shell. Nice, and there you have it. Now you can trigger events from the shell and develop your webhook endpoint code locally and react and fulfill orders. If you install the native Stripe CLI, you would be able to start an event listener on the command line and forward those events to your local dev machine all in one command without having to configure a webhook endpoint in the dashboard. So we do highly recommend installing that for your development toolchain. Finally, if you're a VS Code user, you can install the Stripe VS Code extension and listen for events, trigger events, tail your logs, and much more, all integrated right into VS Code. This extension is underpinned by the Stripe CLI. The Stripe CLI is an essential tool that you can use to develop and test your Stripe integration. 
It's available as a standalone command line tool, integrated as an extension with VS Code, and now it's available right inside the browser with Stripe Shell. We hope you enjoyed this short introduction to Stripe Shell. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at Stripe Dev on Twitter. My handle is matling underscore dev, or you can join in the conversation on our Discord server. Thanks so much for joining us and see you next time. <laughs>